Okay, so these great big zucchini that people just give away uh, that they grow in the garden and stuff, there's a lot of things you can do with them. But the one thing that I like to do with it is make zucchini relish. Um, what I got here is uh, five really nice sized ones. Um, we're going to chop them up and we're going to take a good majority of the seeds out. Not all of them, but a good majority of them. And then we're going to shred it on this little cheese grater thingy here. And at the end, I'm going to put some of these jalapenos in there. These here are not hot. These are sweet peppers. But these little jalapenos here are going to go in the last part of the batch. And that's going to be really hot. It's going to bring some heat to it plus some cayenne pepper. So the first stage of it is, is you just get all your tools. You got, I got my knives and I got all my veggies set out here ready to go. I got my big pot that I'm gonna rice all of this zucchini into. Um, we'll get started on that here and show you how I prepare this. The reason I use the uh, cheese grater like that, yes, you can use a food processor but it breaks it down too much. So I like just doing it by hand. Yeah, it's a hassle, but it gets done good. And I, it, it always comes out better this way. So I'm gonna stick with proven methods and we'll see how this works. Right. So what I've done here is I've started the cleaning process and I've just cut the ends off. And all I'm gonna do is make some cuts to make it easier to handle. I'm not do anything special with it, just makes it easier to handle. Here's the one thing that you run into when you use these big zucchinis. Cut them open and they're full of seeds, big seeds. So all I did is I just skeined some of them out. Yes, there will be some in there. They're not bad for you. Cut them in quarters like this because the next step where I'm going to take these seeds out, it just makes it easier. just like that and you can see the seeds there so I'm going to go through this whole process cut this all up take as much seeds out of it as I possibly can all of it's going to go into here we'll wash it again rinse it real good and just continue on there's the process you can see I already got it started all I'm doing is just taking a little bit of the seeds out. And this stuff really isn't waste. I mean, you can you can still utilize this for something if you wanted to. You can fry it up in a little bit of butter. That'd be good. But that's the process. Just quartering, trying to take a little bit of the seed out. Good to go. So this is what I'm doing with this. You take this here, you're taking the rind and everything, and it's going right in there. It's really easy. It goes really good, it's just it takes a while. Like I said, food processor is faster. And I like this way better. It works out better in the long run. More solid product, not as much mush. 
Every once in a while you're going to click that thing off just to knock the stuff out of the way because if it builds up down on there, it's not going to bite, it's not going to get that stuff in there. So that's the process. I'll go through this whole bowl here and get it in here and then we'll start the other processes. And that's what I'm looking for. Nice stringy cut. Food processor just food processor just makes way too much mush. So that's the finished product and um, you can see there's it's a nice long stringy now we're gonna salt this and set it in the refrigerator overnight zucchini is very high in water content um, so we're not adding any moisture to this at this time um, there's seasonings that we add to it tomorrow and we'll get to that process soon okay for this part we're gonna chop up this big old onion here Throw that in the mix. And when I do this, I love to have color in my zucchini relish. So I've got these tiny sweet peppers. And they're going to go in it too. So I'll get the red and the yellow and the orange in my zucchini relish. Of course, I look like an idiot sitting here trying to peel this onion when it should be really simple. It doesn't want to cooperate. So, anyways, got this and these, and we're going to get right after that. Chop them all up, and we're going to add it right into the mix. After I get the onion in there, we're going to salt it put it out in the fridge overnight. So there's my color and there's my onion. When this all gets mixed in it'll look real purdy. Now I'm going to put five tablespoons of salt in this and mix it up real good. And we're going to set it in the refrigerator in the garage. Purdy. Okay so here we are at phase two of the zucchini relish. In that bowl right there that's covered up, I have jalapenos that are chopped up. That spice that's sitting there are the crushed red pepper flakes. And they add a lot of good flavor to the uh, hot stuff that I want to do. And over here is the recipe ingredients. There's five cups of sugar in this thing. And you got one tablespoon of turmeric and two tablespoons of celery seed and one tablespoon of cornstarch with two and a half cups of just white vinegar now they recommend cider vinegar but that white vinegar is what I had so um, the last batch turned out pretty good and this is the salted mix And it may look like it's pretty dry, but there is a lot of liquid that's on that. And that's all going to have to be drained away as best it can. Plus, it's going to get rinsed and drained. And we'll start that here in just a minute. So here we are, second day of the zucchini relish. Now, you can do this according to the recipe with only salting this for three hours. But I found it always tastes better if I do it overnight. Now, the zucchini is a high water-based content type of vegetable. And there's a lot of liquid in this thing. I haven't stirred it, I haven't done anything to it. All I'm gonna do now is offset the lid on this thing here and grab hold of it by the handles Come over here and pour some of this brine off. Of course you can't see it from where you're at over there, but there's quite a bit coming out. A little bit of your product's going to come out too. That's just a fact of life. I'm going to drain us off here just a little bit. The next part of this
big old wooden spoon. We're just going to rub some cold water in this and rinse it. Stir it around a little bit, try to agitate this stuff around, get it good and moist. For washing it basically. going to come out a lot faster. It's going to be a lot easier to work with. See? And it's green. Who knew it would be green? Zucchini, you know. And the greatest majority of the water just drains right off as soon as you get that tipped over. But like I said, it's a high water content type of vegetable. It just wants to retain it. So basically you're gonna do this about three times. I just drained off all the water. I'm gonna fill it back up, stir it again, drain it off again, one last time. And uh, tools of the trade here. This is a splatter screen for bacon works great for a sieve colander type thing you just put that right over the top you hold it in place you tip it over all your product stays in the pot you get all the water out works really good wooden spoon just to stir stuff up got my jars all set out here got my jalapenos in the jar in the bowl here i got my little funnel that goes in here like this works out great um, all my lids are ready i got these Tongs here for the bottles. Um, this actually go in. These uh, aren't hot bath. This is a cooked recipe. So when this comes out of the uh, pot and goes into the jar, it's going to be hot. But I do have the canner kettle set up over here with water and a rack so that I can heat my jars up because I don't want to put this hot liquid into these cold jars. I'm not a fear of them breaking or nothing like that. It's just I want that heat to maintain in that so that when I do put the lids on them, they seal. Not a great canner, don't know a lot about it, but the seal thing is what keeps them preserved. So you gotta have that. That's why I warm up the jars. That's why we put it in hot and seal them up right away and let them set cool. Um, that process is all going to come down the road here in just a little bit, but the first part is we got to get this washed off, get it on the stove, and we'll bring it to a boil, and then we let it simmer for 30 minutes, and we'll go from there. Okay, so now this is the magic stuff. All the seasonings and the sugar, vinegar, it's all right here in this. I'm going to pour this in here, just like this. Scrape clean off, because I want all the little celery seeds and all that good stuff right there to get in there. Okay, there are a few we got away this time. Maybe next time. Then I'm going to stir this up. Make sure everything gets good and coated. It's going to get cooked anyway. It ain't no thing. Just going to make sure it's spread around and good and loose. Now this part takes 30 minutes. You want to bring it up to a boil. And you'll see it. It'll be bubbling. You want to boil it for about five minutes. Then, we're going to turn the heat down to simmer and let it sit on the stove for 30 minutes. Okay. The canning process is going to go really fast. Um, it's a hot mixture. I'm going to go in there, like I said, warm up the jars. It'll be done in no time. Um, this is just the waiting part, but the end of it is coming.
So about eight to ten minutes. Got a good rolling boil on this sucker. Now what I'm going to do, turn it down to simmer. Keep stirring it here. Put my timer on for 30 minutes. Good boil. What that does is it cooks the zucchini to a softness and the other vegetables that are in it too. But it helps that sugar blend and the other seasonings, the turmeric and, and that. Starting to cool, or starting to calm down on the boil now. 30 minutes. Now, there are two cups of vinegar in this, so that's liquid, plus the liquid in the, the vegetable itself. So, what I'm doing is I'm leaving it open, and I'm hoping that it will reduce a little bit. There is cornstarch in this mix, and that's supposed to give it a little consistency. It looks really good right now. Even when I batch this out into the jars, I use a slotted spoon, metal spoon that I have here. It helps me take some of that moisture away. And in the end process, when I throw the jalapenos in for the last few jars and stuff, I'll actually pour some of that liquid off. Um, so, now, 30 minute waiting period. When the timer goes off, it'll be time to... Uh, get this project on the road. Okay, so I started my water over here to set my jars in. I'm just trying to warm my jars up. Um, this has been simmering now and the timer's just now going off. Shut that down. And I am ready to start jarring this stuff up. It's a pretty quick process. You want to try to get through it as quick as you possibly can. Um, when you fill up these jars, I try to fill them up to right about this neckline here, a little bit above. They say leave about a half an inch. That's just about a half an inch right there. So let's get going here in just a second. It smells delicious. My jalapenos are ready to go in for the last little bit. Let's get this thing done. There's the first one. Now this is the smallest jar. So I put this one out first. It's pretty simple. All we're doing here is we're taking getting us a jar, putting it over here. Slotted spoon. Still a lot of moisture in here. And I drained some of it off into the sink. Squeezing it up against the side of the pot. Put it in the funnel in the jar. Just like that. About two and maybe a third for these little eight ounce jars. that about a half inch from the top a little bit fuller but you get to where you know what the you get to where you want to warm, warm jar. you don't want to put that on tight you just want to put it on snug um, that air, that heat is going to force the air out that's what makes it seal and you'll hear them go pop. All righty then. Turn this water down a little bit. We're doing good there. Give us another jar. Rock and roll. A lot of liquid. really well. 
two, and about a third. Them jars get a little bit warmer. Put just a tad bit more in this one. Good to go. Yeah, three in no time. We're going to do the rest of it. It'll be good. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I got four eight ounce jars and four pints. And the, uh, the four pints, the bigger ones, are the heat. They, and in them four pint jars, there are six jalapenos. And trust me, they are hot. So this is going to be some really hot relish. Um, this is a sweet base relish. Um, it has turmeric in it, which it adds a little flavor to it. Uh, it's really great on hamburgers, on hot dogs. But we also throw it in egg salad, macaroni salad, tuna fish. Um, there's a lot of different salads and things you can add this stuff to. Tastes really, really good. Really simple to make, a little time consuming. Um, these uh, will be gifts. That's what happens with this stuff. Uh, people love it, and we can't seem to hang on to it throughout the year. So I made two batches. Now I've got another batch of pickle stuff that I did too, and I'm waiting to see how that turned out haven't tried it yet uh, but uh, that's it zucchini relish um, I'm gonna post the recipe and the directions at the end of this video so when you get to that part if it's a scrolling by you too fast hit pause everything will be there you can write it down you can get it all in your head how it's got to be done um, it's really good stuff I hope you enjoyed this video and welcome to my second installment of Uncle Dick's Kitchen and I hope to be doing a few more. So there it is, the original recipe. Auntie's Zucchini Relish submitted by Wayne and Arlene Bowman of Palmer, Alaska. And this is off of alaska.net. Um, it's been a good recipe. Easy and it tastes really, really good. And if you have to, hit pause. And you'll get all the information that you need.